Tim Pool hosted a culture war debate on the topic of abortion. Now, Tim Pool's position is that of Bill Clinton, safe, legal, and rare. And Tim Pool had on a quote-unquote pastor, and I use that in the most loosest sense of quotations, Ryan Phipps. He's the church at Church in Bethsaida. It's a very woke church that doesn't embrace the truths of Scripture. And he obviously is a very confused, pro-choice pastor. Debating him was Kristen Hawkins, who's a pro-life activist. Kristen puts this pastor's feet to the fire here, and I'm going to show you six clips. Let's give them a listen. You're talking about life begins at conception then, Whoa. right? Well, yes, we all know life begins at conception. Biologists confirm that life begins at conception. Is would you it, disagree? I would. Yeah. Well, well, uh, when do you think? When do you think you became you? When did I become me? Yeah. When did you come into existence as Ryan? On September 9th of 1976, when my body left my mother's body and was detached, and I began to breathe and. Live you weren't living before you were evacuated out of the womb? I had to be connected to my mother's body in order to be alive. But you were alive because you, things were happening, right? Because you didn't magically, your mother's vaginal canal is not magical. It doesn't turn, it's turn a non-living entity into a living entity. You were alive, you were born, and you changed locations. Now your degree of dependency changed, but you were still alive. There were right? Cellular reproduction was happening. You were growing, you were metabolizing food into energy. So if you look at the biological markers for what is alive and what is life, you were alive. <clears throat> Maybe you can help me out, Ryan. Yeah. If the baby can survive on its own at eight and a half months gestation, why kill it? I think the question, I, I still think we need to get to before that and actually put this in a a human context so maybe it will help to share a story i have a very close friend mother of three amazing kids mm -hmm. between the third uh child and she was trying to have a fourth child uh she got to the point where it was time to give birth and the doctor came in and said it's likely that you won't survive this pregnancy. And so a mother has to choose between parenting three children that mm -hmm. are already living, that are mm -hmm. well into life, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having a baby. This sure. is an impossible situation, mm -hmm. and there is no solution from your side about what well, to there, do there. Well, there is actually. So every single state that has a law that prevents abortions, whether in totality or when a heartbeat can be heard or when the child feels pain, there's always an exception to preserve the life of the mother. Now, and when you look statistically at abortion cases, you know, about 1% of abortions are committed to preserve the life of the mother. And then you look at rape and incest. So Here's trying to find some common ground with you. Do, would you say that 97%, you know, because it's like 2% for sexual assault or incest. So that's like 97% of abortions are committed in our country because of circumstances. But the Do, hard are, are, question. Are you, are you in favor of joining me and saying those are wrong and those should not be permitted? And then let's have a logical philosophical conversation. It's an interesting pivot, but the real question is for you. Are you saying that you support abortion within certain boundaries? Well, Would the you reason support I'm saying abortion? it is because I'm But well, it's I'm just asking, a yes or a no question. I'm asking you because it, when we have these debates about abortion, this comes up all the time when I'm on campuses, Tim. It's always, well, what about rape? What about the, the, the mother's life? I am more than happy to answer that, and I will answer that. But what I find very disingenuous is that when we're talking about abortion, 97% of abortions happen not for those reasons, yet we're being told that 
we need to keep abortion legal for any reason. And I think if you if you want to have common ground and kind of stop having part of this conversation, maybe some of the debates, I think a very way easy way to start that common ground conversation is to say those other 97 percent of abortions should not permit it. And then let's have a conversation so, about the other three percent, because I think it's. It's kind of disingenuous I, to always start the conversation of going to the exception to then justify 100% of abortion. I, is it? Is it a baby inside of a mother? Why don't you answer that, Pastor? Is it is What's what inside a of baby? a mother? When you, when you have a, a member of your congregation that's pregnant, do you say, congratulations, you're having an it or a clump of cells? Or, or oh, what, what's the gender or sex of it? Or do you say of the baby? Do you I usually it? say congratulations. Do you call it a baby inside of the womb? I don't know that I ever have, no. Do you call it a fetus or clump of cells? No, I do not tell a pregnant mother what a wonderful fetus you have. That's just very awkward. <laughs> That's a weird yeah. thing to say. Latin. <laughs> Latin's confusing. Congra congratulations on your fetus I see you have there. But the big I mean, picture, you would go to a baby shower if someone invited you, right? Of course I would. And I would, would christen a baby, but... A baby shower happens when she's pregnant. Her baby is not my choice. Hmm. But is it a baby inside of her? Is it a baby? If she chooses to bring the baby to full term. So we, we still have a huge problem. Yes, and that <laughs> is you, you haven't answered at what yeah, point yeah. does the law protect life? I think that the mom and the doctor have to make that choice. And then on a grander scale... The country has to come to some sort of a consensus but, but about where the where that you're, line is. You're saying you you, you personally, and I, I'm just genuine yeah. honest question. You you personally don't have a view of at what point a police officer would would say I'm arresting you for murder. Yeah, like it, like the Lacey Connor like, Pearson law. Bring if, up if, that if a baby's in a basket and someone walks up and kills it, it's a murder. Yes. If the baby is same same amount of gestation time, eight and a half months. So there's two women. They're identical twins who get pregnant identically, and they, the babies gestate for eight and a half months. One woman says, uh, uh, or one woman goes to the hospital with, a, uh, uh, they both go to the hospital at the same time. The doctor says, we're going to induce labor. The baby needs to come out. She gives birth. They cut the umbilical cord. The other baby is still within the womb of the woman, but they are both identically developed. It would be murder for the baby that was, pr that was prematurely uh, in, uh, uh, birthed. But it would not be murder for the baby that is still within the womb. This is my question. And you're asking which one of those I would affirm? Well, so th I'm trying to understand the uh, your view of at what point does the law say a murder has been committed? Right. So if you, if your argument is a woman and a doctor can choose to terminate the life of the baby, are, are because the baby is within the mother, my question is then. If the baby is identical in every way, but prematurely birthed, is it not protected under the, under the law? So the baby is exiting the womb, correct? There, two two there's, babies. There's two babies. One equally, is out of the womb and one's in the womb. Right. So it, it is entirely possible and probably happens every day mm -hmm. that a baby at eight and a half months is induced. The doctor says, look, we, we think uh, we, we have to induce premature labor, but the baby can survive on its own. It'll mm -hmm. be okay. And the baby is birthed, cut the umbilical cord. It's a healthy, happy baby. What does the mother want? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, uh, but what they do is if they find or believe there's a high probability of Down syndrome in, an, mm -hmm. in the unborn, they terminate the pregnancy. I'm curious your thoughts on that. I don't understand Icelandic law. Uh, I, I'm not asking a legal not, question. I'm yeah. just curious about the moral position. Should it position be legal of, to kill? Or no, 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 no. So, I, 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 just, just to start off the moral? basis. Yeah, like what, what's your view morally of a woman who is pregnant? And she finds out that there's a strong probability the baby will have Down syndrome. Is that? And she says, "Well, I'd, I'd like like to terminate this." That's that's the whole point, Tim. Is that my what is my what do I think the woman should do? Is that your question? No, I, I'm asking you your thoughts on the morality of terminating Down As syndrome. As a pastor, the is it moral to terminate? The a morality with Down is that I don't think it is my right to tell the woman what to do that's so the, what, what so even say like black babies what about black babies like she if a, if a woman found out that uh she didn't realize but she found out her baby was part black 
because the guy she was with was light skinned. And she goes, oh, mm -hmm. heavens, no, I'm going to terminate that pregnancy. That's morally OK. What the because but, of but, race? But, no, yeah. I, well, final like, question. Like, why would you thoughts. grieve? So like going back to this prayer, this Huffington Post blog you did, you talked about women grieving miscarriage. Why would women grieve human DNA? What's there to grieve if it's nothing? Because they wanted to have the baby and it didn't make it. Was it alive? I have no idea. Here, would you like a, let me get real. Well, have you ever seen Hold an ultrasound? <laughs> so, let me get real, alive. let me just get real personal with you for a second yeah. in the event that you think I'm a baby killer. I have two wonderful children. Mm -hmm. We tried to have three. Between the two children, my wife miscarried mm -hmm. on our toilet. Mm -hmm. I was out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. The first thing that I did, and I, I don't even remember reasoning it. It's just where my consciousness went. Mm -hmm. I went into the kitchen and I got one of those soup spoons. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a bloody mess in the toilet bowl and I'm trying to find mm. the uh, the the miscarried pieces. I wasn't attached to a person that existed. I had never known this person. I hadn't had emotional connections with them, conversations, changing their diaper, etc. For me personally, Ryan Phipps, there was not any of that God stuff going on. This is God's image. This is a a human who is hurting right now. The no, no one was hurting except for me. And so that I am not able to look at what happened there as this is a, a human being that is dying in front of me it had already died if you watch this whole podcast you see that the pastor does not answer one question he keeps dodging questions he's very greasy and it's kind of like something that's greasy that when you try and hold on to it it just squirts out of your hand and this is what's going on here in this podcast but he clearly believes that a woman has the right to choose to end the life of the child in the womb at any time how on earth can you be a pro-choice pastor a pastor that supports the murdering of children in the womb you have to disregard many many scriptures but it is because that this pastor ryan phipps believes that truth in morality is relative meaning that it can change from person to person it can change from time to time let's give him a listen on that question I, I, I think the question for you, Pastor, is do you, are you saying you don't believe that there are some things that are always morally wrong and there's some things that are always like you believe that there is right and wrong for some things, right? Do you believe I that? I believe that morality is obviously something personal that I have my own moral code that I believe inside of myself. Mm hmm. I believe that mora morality, societally speaking, and I think that history shows this very clearly, is that morality is relative. Wow. What, history shows, you said? Yeah. the That's ways a really that we shocking have, statement to come from a Christian pastor. Just the ways that we bit. have... Uh, the book of Leviticus teaches that if a man lies with another man as a man does with a woman, that he should be put to death. This was at one time in the history of human beings affirmed as a good law and people confirmed that in their consciences as did people with slavery. But we learn, we, we gather more information, we change our opinions. How on earth can a pastor believe that morality and truth is subjective? He denies the pro-life position. He denies the inspiration and the infallibility and the authority of the Bible. This guy is not a pastor. He's a woke activist with pastor in front of his name. Lots of this stuff is going on in churches in Canada and the U.S. And this is what happens when you abandon the truth 
of God's word. This is what happens when you disregard the word of God as authoritative, inspired, and infallible for the Christian life. You're left with nothing. Except that you hate the truth. You hate Jesus Christ. And you hate his word. Thanks for watching and God bless.